Hi, yeah, thank you for joining myself today. I'm Casey Anderson. I work here at the Idlewild College as an employer accounts officer. I'm going to go through a student carer carer guide for apprenticeships today with you for National Apprenticeship Week. So why choose an apprenticeship? It's a really good way um, to gain the skills that you want for that job that you're wanting to go into. You get to earn the money whilst you're learning the skills. It's a viable alternative to university for a lot of careers now. Um, there's no tuition costs, so there's no costs associated for yourself as a learner. You're going to gain some real insight into the industry that you want to work in and become a valued member of a team with career prospects. You're supported throughout from your employer and then your assessor and here at the college, the team. It's work based learning to gather the evidence to showcase your knowledge. So not so much of a classroom element there, but learning on the job. And what does an apprenticeship involve? So generally it involves having an employer that's willing to support you with an apprenticeship attending college one day a week, that can vary depending on what courses that you're studying. Uh, completing maths and English is a functional skill if you don't have GCSEs at grade four or a C. You'll be required to complete work that's set by your assessor to work towards your apprenticeship. And you'll be working towards gaining the skills, knowledge and behaviours that are required to carry out the job. You'll gather evidence as well to support your learning journey. So that could be photographs, witness testimonies or projects. And what are the benefits of becoming an apprentice? So you gain real life experience in, of the role within that industry, potentially gain a full time role within the business at the end of that apprenticeship. You've got opportunities of career progression, whether that's with that employer or that is within that industry. Any of the training costs are met by the employer. You're employed as a member of staff within the business. You get access to expert knowledge to support you through your apprenticeship and it's structured from the outset. So you know what you'll be learning, you'll know what you'll be walking away with and you'll know what is expected of you. How can people get into an apprenticeship? So set up an account on Isle of Wight Jobs and get notified of vacancies. Most providers on the island and most employers will use that as their main point of advertising. Have an up to date CV and covering letter to apply for the roles. Most of those roles will ask for that as well. Be very careful when you're reading those because they may also ask you to complete an application form as part of that process. Check the Isle College website and our social media pages. Apply for one of the full time courses as an alternative. Um, not everybody who wants to get onto an apprenticeship will get on there straight away because there aren't enough of those available at once when everybody is wanting them. So we do recommend joining one of the full time um, programmes here. They've got an element of work experience and they can also lead to an apprenticeship being offered at a later date as well. And contact employers in the sector that you're interested in and see if they're able to support you or offer you work experience. Um, and that can work alongside your full time course as well. And that can lead to potentially an apprenticeship being offered. What if I can't find an apprenticeship in the industry? So I have a CV and a covering letter available. Register with Isle of Wight Jobs and the National Apprenticeship Service. You may also want to look at widening your catchment area. Some apprenticeships um, that you may be offered in may be available in Portsmouth or Southampton, but not on the island. Contact a provider to find out more about the apprenticeship that they offer. Research it and find out what is expected of the employer. If you've done all your background checks first, um, it may be a little bit easier for you to find an employer that's able to support you. Contact the local businesses to see if they can support you as an apprentice. Talk to family and friends about what you want to do and see if they know of any roles in the industry or if they've heard anything from any of their friends about any positions. And apply for the place on a full time course. Um, if you find an apprenticeship at a later date, you can always decline your place. It's better to have um, a few options than restricting it just to one area. Job searches and tips when applying. Um, I recommend researching the industry that you want to be in. Um, research companies that are in it and find out what they do and how they do it. Not everybody will do exactly the same things. Make sure that on your um, CV and your covering letter that you have an opening paragraph about yourself and why you are a good candidate to work for them. Really sell yourself there. Ask a company if they offer work experience. Um, you know, when you finish school, maybe you could go and ask if they've got any opportunities for you to just find out what it's like to work in that industry. Make sure that your contact details are correct. Double check spellings and make sure that your email address is professional, such as firstname.surname at outlook.com. It will be your first impression of what you are and who you are that they will see. Um, so make it a good one. Give examples of teamwork and when you've worked on your own. Um, 
people will like to see that you can work as part of a team and, and a collaboration and they will also like to know that you're quite independent you could work on your own if needed and make sure that you talk about anything that you take part in outside of school such as sports groups volunteering helping family uh, these are all demonstrate really good communication skills and show that you can communicate with different people at different levels as well and talk about any hobbies that you have they can showcase skills that you may not have even thought about that can be used in a workplace environment as well and what do employers look for? Different employers will look for different things. Um, we've got a few here um, from big companies that have said what they what they are looking for for when people are applying. So Airbus say that teamwork is an important part of life there, and they look for people who love to collaborate and want to learn, grow, and share achievements. Lloyd's Banking Group um, they say just be yourself. If you share the vision and you're eager to learn and can help push the business forward, then they want you to apply. BBC. I always say refer back to the um, job description to help you consider listening your experience and skills. Some businesses will have um, job descriptions and they will have personal specifications and they want to see how you fit within those roles. So it's always good to have them together as well. And Bentley say be prepared, be passionate and be proactive. Take time to understand the industry before you apply. So know what it is that you're going into. You've applied for a job and you've been offered an interview. Um, every job that you apply for, whether it's an apprenticeship or not, will have an interview process also. Um, and they can be very different as to what they um, are looking for. And the company could have their own criteria that they want to look for. Some may ask you to attend a formal interview uh, where they ask you questions. Others may ask you to sit an aptitude test, which is part of the process. So in business admin, they may want to see what your typing skills are like. And other companies may ask to give you a practical demonstration. So. Um, show you something and then ask you to carry that out. If you're unsure what is being asked of you, check with the company what they would like you to do. Don't guess. Um, remember to get there 10 to 15 minutes early. Dress appropriately for the interview. Have some questions to ask the employer, um, you know, such as how can I progress with you as a company? Um, what training um, will you provide me with? And be prepared to answer questions about what you've written. So if you've completed an application form or you've sent your CV in, they will ask you questions about what's written on there. So make sure that you know what you've put on there and research what the company does. It shows that you're interested in them as a company and you've taken the time to find out about them. So you've sat the interview um, and you've received your notification as to whether you've been successful or unsuccessful. Um, resilience and coping with being unsuccessful after an application means that some positions will have many, many people applying for them and they will only have one role. So it can be very competitive, um, especially if you're applying for opportunities with big companies. Many applicants find out that they're not successful in securing it for the first few applications. It's perfectly normal and it is likely that you will probably um, have to apply for a few vacancies before you are successful. Um, we know that applicants feel disheartened if their application has been unsuccessful, but it is important to remain positive and continue applying because the right opportunity will be out there for you. Um, sometimes it's a bit more of perseverance. So we've got some top tips to stay on track when dealing with an unsuccessful application. Try and remain positive and understand that the application process is really competitive. Stay engaged with the process and continue searching for vacancies. And remember, not everybody gets where they want to be straight away, and that's OK. Some people have to go a different route to get there. Seek some help and support with the application process. Ask family, ask friends, teachers, careers advisors, um, visit websites to see what the different processes are and how you can um, make your CV or your covering letter stand out a little bit more. And find out about their recruitment process. Ask the question about, you know, what what it is that they go through in their internal processing and ask for feedback on your application. Um, constructive criticism can sometimes be taken out of context. A lot of businesses will give you feedback to say how you could improve your CV or how you can improve your interviewing techniques and there will be people that can support you with that as well. Entry requirements. So for the apprenticeship, there are no formal entry requirements um, because it is based on the individuals. Um, anybody who's over the age of 16 and living in England can apply for them, depending on the sector. 
Um, it does say that um, ideally maths and English um, at grade four, although if you don't have that, it wouldn't stop you from getting it. It would mean that you would have to um, complete functional skills in maths and English. Um, the law has recently changed um, to lower English math requirements for apprentices um, who may have either a learning difficulty or a disability and that's something that we would talk to you about individually at that point um, so they do have different criteria learners who have educational health care plans so we support learners that have EHDPs um, that are on apprenticeships so what we would do at the college is we would um, have an updated assessment carried out to assess what additional support is needed whilst on an apprenticeship and this allows us to be able to give the information to the employers as well to support an individual um, with what adjustments may be needed for them in the workplace environment. The ALS team here at the college will work with both um, you as an individual, uh, the tutor of the course and the assessor that will come out to make sure that there is appropriate support in place prior to you starting with that apprenticeship. And if you would like any further information or you've got any questions, Samantha Rooney is the person that would um, look after the ALS for the college. And if you wanted to pass on any um, questions to her, you can email into info at iwcollege.ac.uk and that will be passed over directly to Sam and her team. Apprenticeships and salaries. The minimum wage for an apprentice is £4.30 an hour and that's based on 30 to 40 hours a week. Many of the employers will pay more than that. It is dependent on the sector, uh, the region and the apprenticeship level. Um, some of the higher levels will have um, a higher level of pay attached because there will be more responsibility. Uh, each job that is advertised on Isle of Wight Jobs or on our website will have what the rate of pay is. It may be per hour, it may be per week or it may be per month. Um, so do have a look at that, but the minimum should be £4.30 per hour. And what apprenticeships do the Isle of Wight College offer? We offer one of the widest ranges of apprenticeships uh, that we can. So we work with all the different trades in construction. We work with child um, settings, childcare settings. We work with um, education settings. We work with hairdressers, a wide range of engineering companies on the island and on the mainland. Um, engineering is mainly um, taught out of our CCAM site, so the um, Whippingham site. Um, we've got business administration, animal care, and um, we also offer the um, children and young persons and families practitioner manager as well. Hospitality and catering, so if you're looking to get into um, working as a chef, uh, we offer human resources, uh, management, marketing, teaching assistant, which is one of our new ones that we have brought in this year because it's been changed, uh, project management, property maintenance, team leading, and they're all at different levels. So I is an intermediate level, so equivalent level two. Advanced is level three. Higher is level four and above and degree is level six and level seven. And we deliver a wide variety of different degrees. Some of our um, degrees are in partnership with universities on the mainland. And the levels explain. So an intermediate, so a level two qualification is equivalent to five GCSE passes at an A star to C or a nine to four as the new grading system. Um, an advance to the level three is equivalent to two A level. Higher, the level four is equivalent to a foundation degree or above. And degree level five is equivalent to a bachelor's or master's degree, dependent on the sector and the industry. And one other thing that we should mention is that all apprenticeships will include elements of on and off the job training, leading to the industry recognised standards and qualifications. Most of the apprenticeships will also require an assessment at the end of the programme to assess the apprentice's ability and competence in the role. And these can come in different forms. Uh, it could be a professional discussion, it could be a multiple choice exam, they could be given a project or it could be a practical demonstration. It will vary on the uh, dependent on the apprenticeship, but what you will know is what it is expected of you at the start. And the next steps for further information, you can contact the apprenticeships team here at the Isle of Wight College on 01983 or you can email us at apprenticeships at iwcollege.ac.uk or we've got the Facebook page as well that you can contact us on. We're also on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found that informative. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us on the information provided.